It has been another week. Welcome back, everyone. A quick reminder that September is still International Podcast Month. You may have heard my voice already in some of the podcasts released, but this month has lots more great content to come. We will be sure to tweet about it, but you can keep up with everything by visiting internationalpodcastmonth.com and subscribing to the I Am Here, that's H-E-A-R, podcast feed. I want to take a moment to talk about a more serious question that we got this past week from one of our listeners about the system we are covering this month. Mm -hmm. So Deadlands Reloaded has a lot of interesting themes and a lot of crazy plot stuff happening, but it also has a lot of really problematic content, in particular regarding Native Americans. I will say now that we don't really cover that in this series. Um... If you want to hear our guests talk a little bit about it, um, they did do a Q&A chat with Shadow of the Cabal. You can find that chat either in the Sounds Like Crows podcast feed or in the Shadow of the Cabal podcast feed, um, but it's not something that we get into in these episodes. So I want to say that personally, I have struggled to find the best way to talk about those kinds of concerns in our show. You might have noticed that we talk fairly frequently in Character Evolution Cast episodes about how to navigate things respectfully and consciously, and it is something that's really, really important to me. I think everyone, and I mean absolutely everyone, has a right to feel safe and welcome at the table. That being said, I want to make sure that when we do have those kinds of discussions, that we are doing them justice. Ryan and I are middle-class suburban white people. Mm -hmm. And while I identify as queer, our show as a whole is not really coming from a minority perspective. And I think it's important to be upfront about that. I'm not always sure that we are the best people to comment on it. I struggled with it in our L5R episodes. I think it's a careful balance between calling things out when we see them, but also not attempting to speak for marginalized voices when they really should be allowed to speak for themselves. I want to assure everyone that this is something that we take really seriously and something that we've thought about and something that's really important to us and honestly something that we want to do as well as we can. Mm -hmm. So I hope that we get a chance to talk more about navigating some of those issues at the table because I think it's relevant to a lot of us, and it's extremely important. I'm really grateful to our listeners that reached out to us, and I want to make sure that you guys know that you definitely can talk to us and that it's a thing that we are aware of. Um, I'm really glad that you guys are thinking about these topics too, and honestly, I'm really glad that you're challenging us to do better. So please feel free to reach out to us about your concerns Uh, We always want to talk to you about those kinds of things. You can always come find us on our Discord, which is where this conversation happened. We're more than happy to talk about it. Um, But I just want you guys to know that this is definitely a thing that we're aware of and is really important to us or just kind of still navigating the best way to talk about it. Mm -hmm. I agree with everything that Amelia just said. (laughs) (laughs) Thanks, Ryan. (laughs) But finally, on a more positive note, uh, we would like to end on a review, as we always do. Uh, This review comes from Vibrarian from the USA, titled Making Better Players and Play. There is a ton of advice for GMs out there, but not enough information on how to play well. Character Creation Cast, using a wonderful format of building characters and discussing systems, helps bring to light how RPG players can bring out evocative characters and how to interact with games in a delightful, encouraging way. Ryan and Amelia are wonderful, enthusiastic hosts who the RPG community is thankful to have. Oh, that's, that is a very nice positive note to end on. Thank you so much. That's from Justin and Justin is an absolutely amazing person. So thank you, Justin. Thank you, Justin. (laughs) All right, with all of that fun and also serious, but also fun stuff out of the way, let's get to the episode. Enjoy.
last episode of Character Creation Cast, Amelia was making a crazed huckster, Caleb was making a devote blessed, Cameron was making a smooth-talking gambler, Alex was making a recluse lumberjack, and I was making a bloodthirsty gunslinger outlaw who likes a murderin' and a stealin'. Let's pick up right where we left off from last time. Enjoy the show. So edges and hindrances, these these folks have looked through them. I have not, so I'm going to let them. Um, so the way that these work is um, when you start your character, um, if you pick human, you get one free edge. So you get to pick your edge. Um, and then after that, any character gets another edge. Correct, Alex? So like at, at character creation, get one edge and then one extra for being human. Um, I don't think so, no. I oh. think that um, other races, if you're playing like a fantasy setting or something like that, they just get some racial um, benefits, but if they want edges, they have to use the hindrance system to get points. I think humans are the only thing. It's kind of like in fifth edition, uh, human variants get a free feat, and they're the only one that get that same Makes kind sense. of concept with this. So then at this point, because we're all playing human, all of us get one free edge to start. Um, and then from there, uh, in order to get further edges, um, you need to pick what are called hindrances, which are basically going to be uh, mechanical drawbacks to your character. They're also going to have a huge effect on who your character is as a person. Um, it's a good way that this system kind of forces you to put drawbacks on your characters and to kind of uh, flush out their own hindrances and, and drawbacks. Um, so the way that works is there are both major and minor hindrances. Major hindrances are going to be things like uh, arrogant, um, which would draw you into dangerous situations, um, a major addiction, Say you are addicted to opioids and you, you constantly need them um, in order to be functional. Um, and then there are minor ones such as uh, like a minor habit um, or a minor enemy. Somebody who kind of has it out for you but isn't going to go, you know, like chase you across the world. Um, but for every major hindrance you have, it gives you an edge. And for every two minor hindrances you have, it gives you an edge. And you can pick up to three to begin. So, uh, I picked uh, Tenderfoot as a minor, uh, which is basically going to mean that I have minus one grit, and I'm kind of, I'm not used to being out in the, in the dirt. I'm more of a city slicker. And then uh, Habit is my other minor. I think he's going to be uh, addicted to tobacco. So as long as I'm smoking, I don't have any uh, drawbacks. And then uh, Arrogant is going to be my major. So that's going to draw me into all kinds of dangerous situations where my character is going to be cocky and think that he can handle whatever he comes across. So that's going to buy me two extra edges. Okay. Well, from what I'm understanding here in the Deadlands book, you can only get points from the first major and the first two minor hindrances. Right. That's correct, yeah. So mm-hmm. you could have up to four points, and then you we can get, spend um... two points for an edge, or you can spend one point for another skill or money. Yes. Absolutely. You, could, you could also spend two points to raise one attribute up a die type. Yeah. If Ooh, I didn't realize you could do that at character creation. Wow. Learn something new every day, yep. Cameron. You're always a student. Most people, I think, pick edges because they're just so dang fun. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But you, you definitely. They're pretty flavorful. They are flavorful. Uh, but you definitely have that option. And every time you get an advancement, which you'll get four each rank when you're leveling up you can just pick an edge. So if you got your eyes on something, you can always pick it later. As long as it's not a background edge, like the one I picked, which is miracles. So um, I can pray for things and they might happen. So, oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, they kind of, again, work like clerics where you just say what you want. You know, you pick a power that is available to them. You make a faith roll and you get negatives depending on how crazy of a thing it is. So if it's a crazy power, it'd be a negative four. And then if you're successful, it happens. And I believe there's a rule in here where if you roll a one on your faith die, you have a crisis of faith and it's possible you may not be able to ask for more miracles until you resolve that somehow. Oh, very cool. Yeah, this system has a really good... Uh, I'm having a hard time talking today. All the spellcasters hurt. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this system has a cool balancing act that it, that it kind of goes through where uh, with all of the casters, if you roll a one, something terrible can happen. Um, for um, mad scientists who are another basically form of caster, 
um, if they roll a natural one on their uh, on their mad science roll, whatever they're using malfunctions. Oftentimes that means it's going to explode or it just will stop functioning. Um, and hucksters, if they roll a one, they have to go through a thing with the, with the demon making a deal that, uh, that whole thing comes up. So it's really interesting way, uh, to add flavor to your characters and to the caster specifically. Oh, very cool. So I have a question. There are a couple that are listed as major slash minor. So do you just like pick how much you want to play into that yeah, or basically it kind of details it in most of those, I think, but basically mm-hmm. you're just picking how severe that particular hindrance is. So one I just okay. looked at, for example, was wanted, um, which my character does have. I took it as a minor mm-hmm. and a minor hindrance of that is like you have a hundred dollars on your head. You probably have a state bounty and there's probably not a lot of people coming after you. A major details it as somewhere equivalent to a thousand dollars as being wanted which means you probably have bounty hunters following you across state lines to try and track you down yeah it's uh it's 1d6 times 100 for the minor and 1d6 times a thousand for the major oh which is, which wow could be thank up you to six thousand if you had it as a major which is crazy man i learned something today which is ryan is better at reading than i am <laughs> <laughs> that's not surprising well, I, to me I, I know this because i also took wanted um, as a minor uh, hindrance for my character. Cool. Well, maybe you guys are getting into some stuff together. Maybe, that, dude. That's very possible. Um, and then this is a sound you're going to hear a lot whenever you're playing Deadlands. Shuffling cards. Shuffling cards. Because, Alex, you picked a hindrance over there? This is actually an edge. I'm getting a little Ooh. a little ahead of the game here. What'd you get? Well, should I go over my hindrances first? Probably. Are we doing that? Yeah, probably. Sorry. Has I'm messing else, up the flow of this has show. Has done it? Already? I, I haven't done mine yet. I haven't. Okay. I haven't gotten mine. I, have not I haven't either. gotten mine. I'm still kind of trying to. I'm learn. also still picking. Okay, cool. Well, I'll wait then. Well, Sorry. I got I'll... mine. My okay. Go for it. All right. So for my minor hindrances, I took two of them. Uh, I already went over that I took wanted as a minor hindrance, but I also took vengeful as oh, a minor no. hindrance. And uh, that basically that says if your your character always attempts to right a wrong he feels was done to him. So since it's a minor hindrance, I'll usually seek vengeance legally. What well, usually is probably the key word there for this character. Yeah. Um, but if it's major, uh, basically they'll kill to see that that vengeance done. On our show, Abel has a major hindrance of vengeful. Oh, interesting. That explains a lot. Yeah, yeah, it does. <laughs> yeah. That makes so much sense. There are a couple though that I was reading through here. I was like, oh, I know who yeah. has that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, probably my most problematic hindrance uh, is my major hindrance. Um, I took bloodthirsty. I tell oh, you, that is a that major hindrance one. has got me in a lot of trouble in the past. <laughs> oh, I'm it sure. Really cool. Yeah, I'm sure it would. Uh, basically, this one means that I will never take prisoners. Uh, shoot to kill, pretty much all the time. Wow! Wow! I'm really proud of you. I'm <laughs> yeah. so proud of you for not making a nice guy. Yeah, this guy's intense. Yeah, yeah this guy's super yeah. intense. He's going to get the whole party killed, probably. Yep. It's... In their first encounter. It's going to be great. I feel like that's the great part about doing things this way, though, is that like we never have to follow right. through or see the consequences of our terrible <laughs> yep. character decisions. Yeah, right. <laughs> yep, that's what I've been thinking about this whole time. <laughs> yeah, I, I still tried to make him uh, something that I think I would have fun playing. Yeah. Um, and not just a all around skis bag, but <laughs> <laughs> I think it, sometimes those are fun. It's yeah. really good to push yourself in a direction of a character you haven't normally played. I feel like you always learn a little something about yourself, even if you don't have a ton of fun with the character. That's true, and it's always it's I don't know it's always a good time. It's 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 good to try something new, and it's also good to like counteract your own nature. Mm-hmm. In and, a way. and you can always get out. I played a character I didn't like very much recently, um, specifically to challenge myself. And then we got a year into that game, and I was like, ah, I'm done. And I switched. Right. Yep. So, yeah, I think this I think... character would have a very short lifespan, probably. <laughs> I think most of these characters have <laughs> short lifespans. Yep. I mean, any character in Savage Worlds has the possibility of having a short lifespan. That's very true. So in addition to Wanted, I picked, as my other minor hindrance, uh, Death Wish. He's got a minor... Uh, death wish i kind of have a story reason for this do we wait to do that later or should i talk about that now you can talk about that right now 
All right, so these two kind of go hand in hand, Death Wish and Wanted. Uh, the pre- the premise I have in my head is he used to be a soldier for the North or South. I don't know yet. Depends on what you guys, where you all are from. And um, I think he was in a combat one time. And because he is Grim Servant O Death, which oh, no. is my major hindrance, when you roll a one on any sort of attack roll, you shoot an ally instead. So this happened. He shot someone <laughs> in his company and then he just deserted. He ran away. And now he's wanted and he's trying to redeem himself. But and that's sort of where the death wish comes in. Um, Death wish means that you're looking to accomplish. You're basically trying to die heroically. Uh, And I picked it as a minor. So it's not crazy. I don't know if I want to be in this party anymore. (laughs) (laughs) Just bullets everywhere. (laughs) We got someone who's bloodthirsty. We got the grim servant of death. (laughs) It's funny because I almost took the grim servant of death. Well. That would have been great. That would have been great. <laughs> Death would have been sure really, that one too. It's a cool edge or a hindrance, I guess. It is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah <it's laughs> it depends on who you're depends playing. Depends on who you are, yeah. I like it because it doesn't hurt anyone. It hurts everyone except you. You know? Right. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> I was thinking about going for like a berserker kind of character, but I'm really glad I didn't at this point because it would be way too much chaos, I think. It would shoot you and then you'd have to kill us. Yeah. <laughs> man. Yeah, I just feel like that's a real GM move to pick something that hurts everybody else. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> Listen, failure is good for the story, okay? Oh, my God. I couldn't tell you how many times I've fail, heard that. Fail forward. Fail forward. Ugh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right, Gross. Who else has to... Did, did we all go? I mean, I didn't yet. But. Alex hasn't gone, gone but I think his play right into his edges. So I say Amelia should go for it, and then Alex can bring us into the edges. Sure. All right. So for my major hindrance, I picked Bad Dreams. Nice. Okay. Yeah. Um, which um, you start with one less Benny per session, and you're always tired. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's hitting a little like too close life. to home. <laughs> That's, yeah, just like real life. I really like when players um, have that ed- that hindrance as a GM, because you can like foreshadow a lot of stuff. You can talk about like weird enemies and stuff. It's cool. That's a good choice. Mm-hmm. Uh, I also picked Delusional as a minor hindrance and then i also picked stubborn <laughs> nice oh, wow because wow. i'm not playing myself at all no. <laughs> right are you delusional because you don't know if this is still a dream oh my god i didn't i wasn't exactly. going anywhere with that i liked it oh, okay <laughs> <laughs> that is where i was going with it but. And that's why she's well, got the nightmares all the time um mm-hmm. i haven't picked my last edge you guys that's fine alex what do you got oh i i have like not really picked edges either all right, let's go over my hindrances real fast. Uh, Lay them on us. Mm-hmm. So I like to think this character is being uh, almost like shunned by society, or he just he doesn't get along with people very well, which kind of led him to the uh, the lumberjack lifestyle and eventually more of like a secluded mountain man kind of lifestyle. He only goes into cities when he ha- absolutely has to. Um, so I picked Clueless, which is a hindrance that basically common knowledge, like famous people, you know, current events, I have no knowledge of. I get like a minus two every time I have to roll for it. Mm. Um, then I took outsider kind of for along the same lines, you know, I feel like I'm an outsider amongst, uh, towns or cities, you know? So I took that, um, which also I think gives me negatives to basically just like dealing with people. Um, so I'm not good with people. And then my, my third hindrance is, um, lion eyes. So I'm also not very good at lying to people, which kind of, I think also falls into that. So I kind of just put all of my eggs into that basket, the not being good with people basket. And then, uh, I have to have a fourth one. Because one of my edges kind of forced me into it here. Oh. So I don't know if you want me to go over that now or wait for us to go into the edges. Well, well I think we're ready for that, yeah? Yeah, I think we're ready for that. So my fourth one, um, I took an edge. It's uh, called Veteran of the Old West, Veteran O of the Old West. Um, and when you take this edge, it's a background edge. So you take it during character creation. And when you take it, you have to draw a card out of a deck of cards. And something bad's going to happen with your character based on what you drew. And I drew a five of hearts. So basically I wound up with a, uh, because of all of the exposure I've had out in the woods to uh, the weird West in general, different monsters and weird happenings, uh, I have developed alcoholism. So that's just part of my character now. I don't really have a choice in that because I picked that edge. (laughs) That's pretty good. That makes sense. Um, Don't know if he wants to go into the rest of the edges now or should we wait for everybody else to get caught up a little bit or? I mean, I have my edges picked out so I can just pick up right after you. Yeah, me too. Okay. You only go into town for one thing. <laughs> Whiskey. Whiskey. <laughs> That's right. That's probably true, actually. That makes sense. 
So then uh, I took brawny because I felt like I had to since I'm a lumberjack, which basically increases my toughness by one and uh, makes it so I can carry more stuff. Right. And then I took um, brave, um, which gives me bonuses to fear checks. So I think it's a plus two bonus. And then since I took veteran of the old west, the good side of that is I'm seasoned right off the bat. So basically, it gives you four free advances. Oh, wow. And with those, I pick some different um, combat edges. So I picked Sweep. Kind of lets me do... Um, it's kind of like Cleave in Pathfinder, or some of the um, D&D editions. Lets you make uh, melee attack rolls against a, a more than one adjacent target, essentially, at a negative two, I think. And then I took, uh, took a trademark weapon, choosing my trusty axe. So I get a, a plus one bonus to all um, fighting rolls I make with that. So that'll help out when I'm taking negatives from Sweep and from Frenzy, which I took with my Season, which lets me make two attacks at a minus two. Wow. And then um, with my last advance, I just got an um, uh, attribute increase. I, used, I increased my strength to a D10, so that'll juice my, my damage up a little bit, and it let me, took, uh, let me take Frenzy. Oh, very cool. And that's it. Well, Those that are my edges. Very productive. <laughs> I'll let you know he purposely did not choose the edge titled Woodsman. I couldn't because of the, look at the requirements. Lots of requirements on that one. Lots of requirements. Lots of requirements. Yeah, I saw that one and I'm like, oh my goodness. I really wanted to, but I like, ahead. there's no way in the world I can make all that work. <laughs> can, plus can get all these cool. Can you plan ahead for that one? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure this part is going to reveal which of us are power gamers. Um, <laughs> I don't know if there's such you. thing as Savage Worlds, honestly. is like, yeah, you can get like some different combat edges, but they don't help you out that much. And at the end of the day, a rat could attack you. And it's damage dice could blow up 10 times and you're dead. Yep. <laughs> There's nothing you can do about it. Just like the rabbit from uh, Monty Python. Exactly. Right. That, that could happen in Savage Worlds. <laughs> so I have my edges ready. Yeah, go for it. Um, go for it. So I went with Charismatic, um, which is going to give me a plus two um, charisma, which you add to any, basically any positive uh, social interaction. So if I were to, mainly it's persuasion. If you try to persuade somebody, um, I will roll that at a plus two. Um, and then I believe it also, depending on how you're doing it, might play into taunt if you try to, you know, twist things up to make it work that way. Um, so I just imagine my character being very charismatic and good with people. So I went ahead and grabbed that one. And then I grabbed lucky, which means that I get to grab a fourth Benny at the beginning of every session. Nice. That's pretty and cool. That's it for me. Yeah. And then for mine, um, one thing I forgot to go over for the hindrances with Bloodthirsty, uh, my charisma is minus four if people know of my cruel habits. And that can actually be a benefit, especially when it comes to intimidation or taunt. Oh, nice. Why is that, Cameron? Well, just intimidation, I think. Is it just intimidation? Yeah. So when you try to intimidate somebody, you get to add your negative char- uh, charisma to it. So if oh, you, interesting. If you have minus four, you roll it plus four. That fits very well with the character I was trying to go for. Uh, also very yeah. well with uh, one of my edges that I chose. Um, and that one was Strong Willed, uh, which required my Intimidate and my Taunt to be at D6s. Characters who are Strong Willed use their voice, uh, their steely stares, as they say, or quick wits to unnerve their opponents. And basically they will add plus two to a character's Intimidate and Taunt rolls. Wow. As well as uh, their spirit and smarts rolls when resisting tests of the will attacks. Dang. So I thought that was a pretty cool one. Yeah, I like that edge a lot. Yeah. Hmm. And then my other edge was quick draw, which I felt worked really well. It needed an agility of D8. And uh, this basically allows you to draw a weapon and ignore the usual minus two to their attack that round. So uh, when you try to draw a weapon and attack on the same round, that counts as basically two actions. So uh, the way that Savage Worlds works is you're allowed to do as many actions as you'd like, but with each uh, action, you take a minus two to the next one. So if you try to do two, you take both actions at minus two. Okay. So you can do three, but that means that you're going to be, all three of them are going to be at minus four. So with quick draw, it means that you negate that first negative two and you get to make an attack uh, flat. Unless, but you can't do um, the same action twice. For example, you can't attack twice with the same weapon unless you have some sort of edge or something that lets you do it. Oh, okay. That's cool. Yeah, and it yeah. says that this one gives me plus two to agility rolls to draw a weapon uh, in those types of situations that requires it. Cool. Wow. 
man, this is a really dope gunslinger, <laughs> to be right. honest. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, you're going to do something like very serious matters. Yeah, that, probably. That, that's pretty much the point. It's like a cooler version of Lucky. Yeah, Almost. way cooler way version. Cooler. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, who still has to go? Did everybody else? I haven't gone. Do theirs or? I haven't gone. Uh, I, do you know what you want? Or are you still thinking? Should I start talking? Um, yeah, you go for it. You go for it. Okay. Um, I think I want to do Snake Oil Salesman. Ooh, that's a good okay. one. That's a good, yeah. Yeah, which um, gives a plus two bonus to Persuasion and Streetwise rolls. I don't have Streetwise, but that's fine. And then I I feel like I want to take a knack. One of the choices here. <laughs> Where did they go? Part of me really wants to take Breach Birth because I'm just playing myself. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how I was born. So Dang. I feel like I might just take that one just because. What's that, that, that one point? Do? Um, let's see here. Uh, you can spend a fate chip to use the greater healing power. Um, you don't need to roll. You automatically get a single success, healing one wound. Mm. That's going to come in handy. Yeah, that's pretty good. Very nice. Oh, and I think I, I forgot to mention that I still have two points left over from my hindrances. Um, so... and instead of buying an edge with those two points, I went and, uh, put one of those points into a streetwise skill. So now I'm at a D4 for Streetwise. That's a good way to use that. Oh, yeah. And then I gave myself an extra 250 bucks. Nice. Oh, nice. Wow. <laughs> yeah. As you'll see from my equipment selection, I've got somewhat of expensive tastes. All, All right, right, Caleb, what do you got? Okay. All right. Here I go. This is what I got. So I guess I was in the Confederate Army because you I guess. picked the Edge uh, Rebel Yell. So I can make an Intimidation roll, which I don't have. Because uh, he's not very good at it, but he can let out this intimidating s yell in a large burst around him. So it's like an AOE intimidate, and it's possible I could shake some people. So um, I think he picked that up from his time in the army. I had to pick the background edge miracles so that I could pray for miracles. And then I picked the edge holy warrior, which means that I can pray for God's protection of me, and if there are demons or evil creatures around me, again in a large burst area, I can um, make a, they make a spirit roll, and if they fail, they could be shaken, or they could just be flat killed if they're an extra, or they oh. could take a wound if they're a wild card. Um, actually, we haven't talked about that yet either. There's uh, mobs in this game. There's wild cards, which is what we are. They have three wounds before they go down. And then there's extras, which are like the Mooks and Jackie Chan movies that he just beats up 20 of them in a single fight scene. <laughs> and uh, they have no wounds. Uh, if you beat their toughness, if you get a raise on their toughness, they're gone. They're dead. Uh, if you equal their toughness, they're just shaken. Hmm. So when you're playing on a grid, it's pretty helpful because... They they call it, they're either up, down, or out. So they're either standing up, which means they're good to go. You can knock over the mini to say they're shaken or take them off the table when they're dead, and it works really fast. Oh, very cool. No tracking hit points. That's that's all I got. Pretty boring edges, I think. I think it's super interesting. I mean, you picked an edge that doesn't really line up well with your skills, and that I feel like that draws a lot to your character. And mm -hmm. like on, Honestly, sometimes making the wrong choice makes it way more interesting. Uh, definitely yeah, especially yeah. if there's okay. a story we get some cool it. exactly so other than that uh, i think we're good on edges we did it mm -hmm. wow nice Ra round of applause what's next this translates well to an audio medium yeah <laughs> for sure <laughs> have fun editing that out later <laughs> <laughs> so next i think is gear right choosing gear and stuff yes yeah, it looks like you start with 250 dollars so, I mean, I feel like at this point we can probably go over if there's any major things that we want. I don't think we need to, like, point out every $3 pair of pants that we Excellent. buy. Right. Sure. How much money do we get, you guys? 250 250 As Ryan just stated. 250 That's yeah. correct. Huh? Ryan used his point to get an extra 250 Yeah, so I started so with $500. $500. Oh, man, I didn't know you get to double it. That's crazy. Yeah, that's oh. crazy. And I, I only did that because I was pricing out what I wanted. And then I got to a point where I'm like, I should add these up. And it was way over two fifty. That's how it goes. <laughs> yeah. Like, okay. Okay, I'll stop doing. I was gonna calculate how many pairs of pants I can buy with two hundred fifty dollars. I mean, I have a pretty basic idea about what what gear my character would need. Um, I mean, obviously he's gonna get clothes. Um, I don't think he has a horse. Um, so I'm not gonna use any money to buy a horse. Um, I imagine that he has a six shooter of some kind, just a, a basic pistol, 
a holster, a deck of cards, and then some nice clothes. I don't think he really has anything beyond that. Everybody should have chaps, by the way. Yeah. Chaps chaps are so good. If if you're <laughs> able to ride in a horse. Yeah. <laughs> That's real life advice. Uh, Everybody. The, yeah. If I have several <laughs> pairs of chaps. <laughs> 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 you're in IT, you do um, programming, you need some chaps. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care who you are, get some chaps. Uh, my gear is also pretty basic, I think, what most characters would buy. Um, you know, I've got a Bible. Um, I don't have a six-shooter. I have a musket, so I have to spend an action or two actions to reload this thing. Oh, wow. And then it's also got a bayonet that I'm going to use for stabbing most of the time. Nice. Uh, besides that, I bought a pound of bacon, a pound of coffee, and most importantly, four mules. Oh, excellent. Oh, oh wow. you did go with the mule thing. <laughs> yeah. Hey, where are mules in here, Caleb? <laughs> That's They're under common items. Common items. Excellent. 50 bucks a, a piece. Here. That's hilarious. That's not bad. That's right. You can buy four and you have $50 left over for whatever you want. Wow. Now, my favorite thing about mules and um, horses in this system is you can get El Cheapo gear, folks. Okay. Mm-hmm. And you can apply it to horses. It means that if you're buying El Cheapo gear, like a gun, maybe you get a dirty, rusty gun that might misfire sometimes. If you get an El Cheapo donkey or horse, you apply hindrances to it. (laughs) 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 What? Oh, my gosh. Can I have a delusional horse, You could have a delusional horse. You could have a delusional horse that only has three legs. Uh, My mule is an alcoholic. (laughs) (laughs) I don't drink water, and neither does my mule. <laughs> Which is why I spend all my money on whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> and a mule. But your mule has very expensive taste. Yes. Top shelf only. <laughs> only Japanese whiskey. How much is a horse? 100, like, 150. $150. Horse. Yeah. 150. What? I highly recommend the El Cheapo. Cheapo horse. I'm getting a mule personally. Did you go over all your stuff? I already? think it's half, yeah. Yeah, I think it's half for those. I would order my stuff. I feel like cool. I want my horse to also have nightmares. <laughs> <laughs> that would be the worst. <laughs> Nobody's getting sleep. Um, yep. I'm not sure if you pick the hindrances or if they're randomly. random. I don't. Dis- I don't care. Yeah, yeah it's. Good- I like the nightmare I'm not horse. Playing this game, it's of Caleb. the marshal's choice. Yeah, the marshal gets it's two players. minor. Or the, they get two minor hindrances or one major hindrance of the marshal's choice. Man, I think need- you should have a really arrogant horse. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody call Tanner. Ask him. Oh my Do God. they meet the requirements? I'll message him. Do we have to give? I'll message him right now. Do we have to give horses uh, d dice rolls on uh, agility and all that. Yep. Yeah, you do. Yep. So there's like there should be stats for a horse, and um, I don't know if it's in the Denon's guide, but there's definitely some in the player's guide. I think. Right? Interesting. Yeah. The deluxe um, guide? Yeah, you don't have to assign them points. They get basic stats, and then they would get um, the hindrances from El Cheapo. Oh, okay. Just seeing if I wanted anything else on here. Ooh, canteen would be nice. <laughs> uh, yep. I didn't buy any water, no whiskey, you know. Just me and the mules. I'll let your imagination <laughs> fill in the rest. Yeah, why do you have so many mules? Well, I'll I'm let sure your this. imagination <laughs> fill in the rest. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> My I went goodness. pretty basic with you'll my gear. Go, you'll never go hungry. <laughs> What'd you get, Alex? I think uh, I'm just going to get like the basic, you know, clothes, survival stuff, water, whatever. And then with the remainder of my money, I just bought a... They don't have, uh, unfortunately, they don't have lumberjack axe in here. But the closest thing would probably be... Axe? I'm going with a, a war club bladed. Oh. Because it's okay. a big old axe, okay? <laughs> okay, yeah. So I bought one of those, eight bucks, no big deal. And then the rest of my money is going to be spent on one meal. And then probably some whiskey, and then I'll try and save a little just for spinning. Just for spinning. Probably a good amount of whiskey. The cheap stuff. Now, is this, a bottle. is this two barrels on the side of your mule? I would like to think so. Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> that would be pretty expensive. But that's, the GM's, that's the GM's discretion. The cheap stuff is only $2 a bottle. Yeah. So I don't know how many bottles will fit in a Is it 40 a barrel. in a whiskey barrel? Okay, how we much is... Gonna... Let's do the math. I'm, I'm going to be real annoyed. Let's do the math. How much is a bottle of whiskey? Three bucks? Two dollars for a cheap. Okay, so it's a tenth of what it is now. So a barrel of whiskey would be three hundred dollars, right? Okay, so right. So one hundred fifty bottles in a barrel. Yeah. Oof. 
so I don't got barrels on there. Well, they're not full. You also they're have not full full. The, the glass. <laughs> not anymore. They're not. Not anymore. Maybe at one point. <laughs> That's cool. I like that. I have at least. I probably have one empty barrel, one sloshing around oh, in there. You can't do that. The mule's going to be like off center. Oh, you're right. So I'll distribute the whiskey evenly. <laughs> Just pour it between the barrels. <laughs> how much time do we spend a day with you, like measuring out how much goes into? Too long. If that mule drinks too much whiskey, he's out. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes he, when the when the mule's really drunk, we use it to counteract his wobble. So he he tends to lean to the right side when he's drunk. So you fill up the left side a little heavier with whiskey, and then he can walk straight. And the mule will refuse to walk after a certain amount of time if, unless he has some whiskey, which is why I fashioned. It's like a tube, <laughs> almost like a hamster bottle. It's like a carrot and a stick situation, yeah, but it's whiskey. whiskey and like a gerbil. Yes. Oh and Caleb's God. mules are going to be alcoholics too by the end of this. <laughs> <laughs> I've tried real hard to stop them, but you're not making it easy. Somebody needs to call PETA. <laughs> oh my God. You have ruined our show. <laughs> I almost forgot to buy a saddle. Do you use Ooh. your axe as a walking stick? I could if I wanted to, Caleb. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I don't think I do. I don't think I'm full of Thaddeus here. No, but what? What is a what buckboard? Like? For under what? transportation, buckboard. Is that possibly the thing they put on rail lines where you push the paddles up and down? Might be. I have no idea. I don't know. Let's Google I that. imagine it's a skateboard. Oh, like a longboard situation. Oh, okay. it's under That's a much cooler. It's 75 bucks. Jeez. I think it might be one of those. That sounds yeah. right. Oh, that that makes sense. it's one of those old-timey wagon things. A wagon thing? It's uh, like you've got the seats on it and it's got the wheels. It's not like a, it's not like a cart or it's oh. not like a thing where you have... A storage in the back. It's so, you just got seats on it, and you hook a horse up to it. Oh, uh, okay. So it's like a real basic. It's like a a wagon that they just yeah. tore down. So it's just literally a board. You should get one of those. We'll put, hook up all the mules to it. We'll be <laughs> traveling in style. You definitely should. So basically, it's just a big old table with wheels. wagon wheels on it. Yeah, and, then and chairs. chairs on it. Yeah. Cool. It's transportation. So then we can like stop and have dinner later. Yeah, I'm sure. gonna get yeah. a buckboard. Okay. Well, cool. We need some chairs then too. I think it comes with chairs. Use it as a table. <laughs> oh, yeah. use the buckboard as a table. Yeah, stop for dinner. Yep. Hmm. Consensus appears to be that my horse needs a phobia. Yeah. Oh, okay. What? Yeah. What's oh, it? that's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm um, scared of ants. That'd be. That'd so, be what is good. a good horse phobia? People. Mice. Not a phobia uh, of other horses people. or mules. Apparently, it's got to be jackalopes. It's it's got to be something <laughs> that will never common. come up. <laughs> Make it whiskey. <laughs> Just no, <laughs> don't make it whiskey, please. Make no. it mules. <laughs> <laughs> but only the drunk ones. Maybe it has a phobia of you having nightmares. Maybe you have night terrors and you scream. It doesn't make any sense. And so it's constantly, it's constantly paranoid every night. I don't think a horse can comprehend. On what that if level. it has a phobia for screaming? I don't know screaming. if a phobia is the same as horse PTSD. <laughs> Which sounds like what you could be. I would Who pick knows? something that doesn't exist yet, like AK 47s or like helicopters. <laughs> well, helicopters exist. <laughs> yeah, they what do if exist. it's afraid of weird science devices? That's pretty cool. Ooh. It doesn't trust them. It just knows. It just sees something and says, oh, that yeah. is going to blow up. There's a distinctive feature of weird science devices where, as, as they're going, they always burn like the souls of the damned they are burning inside. Because of the ghost rock. Because of the ghost rock. Did we talk about ghost rock on here? No, kind of. I feel like we all we said was like weird coal with souls inside it. I mean, that sums it up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a steampunk resource that screams and is really expensive. Super expensive. Wow. Crazy. So can everyone hear it screaming? Yeah. Yes. Yep. Apparently. Yeah. Um, I think it'll... maybe my horse is particularly sensitive. To that it. would be yeah. an interesting phobia for the horse, though. Cause I think so. That's just creepy as heck. Right. Yeah. yeah. It senses something's a little off. Especially since it originates from like the uh what was it called? That event that happened. The Great Quake, maybe? Yeah, isn't that when it started popping up? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I so think it's like, sixty. It's got origins in like the hunting grounds or something like that. Yeah. Who knows? Who knows? It just pops up everywhere. Oh, Not yeah. me. Pops up especially in California. That's pretty cool. So I just cool. So this horse is especially yeah. spooky. <laughs> <laughs> I just priced out what what I all bought and I am left with twenty dollars and seventy five cents. It'll get you a wow. lot in the weird west. <laughs> You're just pretty good. My goodness. That's $500. And you, you had a lot of money. You got a lot of gear, though. You got a lot of good stuff. Well, yeah, yeah. Okay. So I'm going to go over a little bit of the highlights here. Um, I got a, right. got a horse, not a defective one, but an actual <laughs> horse. Um, 
you know, the saddle, saddlebags, and all that other fun stuff. Um, I got a lock pick set, so I can pick okay. locks. Um, I got two Colt Peacemakers, double action revolvers, um, so I can uh, potentially dual wield those, I would imagine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You will. It's going to be tricky for you, but you can. Yeah. Yep. We'll just put it at but, that. But uh, just in case, um, I normally would probably be using one of them and one as a backup. And on top of that, I also have two speed load cylinders for each of them. Ooh. Okay, but hold on. I'm, we're going to have to back up yeah. here for a second. What are the names oh, of your guns? Don't, don't do this. Oh. Do <laughs> <laughs> so you don't name your horse, but you want him to name his guns. Uh, <laughs> yeah, what's the name? What's the name of your El Chico horse? What was, what was the name of? Oh man! What was the what was its name before you bought it? That is a good question. Because somebody named it before. No, this means Caleb and then has to, to name every it. single one of his mules too. Oh, I already named them: Righty, Lefty, Fronty, and Will. <laughs> My mule's name is Wungus Bill. <laughs> Wungus. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I feel like it's, it, I mean, it needs a real stupid name. Oh, man. I think his name is Arthur. Arthur's good. Oh, Arthur's a good Arthur's name. A good I feel like name. Arthur's a good, good scaredy horse yeah. name. Yeah. There you go. I imagine him gray. Oh, there goes Arthur again. <laughs> I All do right. actually really care about what your gun. guns. Yay. All right, I'm ready. Hunger and thirst. Ooh. Oh, okay. my God. Ooh. Good. Yep. <laughs> I'm imagining this guy being a real edgelord. <laughs> <laughs> He's just he's just holding them out. This is hunger. Yeah. And this is thirst. It's a good thing we got some smooth talkers in the party because we're gonna need that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Real quick. Yeah, I, I basically went all out with the fancy clothes. He's got like silk stockings and everything. Cool. Two pairs of suits, boots. Uh he's got one of those fancy what are those called? Hat hat? <laughs> the, st- the, st- <laughs> the bowler hat? <laughs> <laughs> see, oh. like, and nobody can see this, but Ryan's like pointing. What, to are, those like, what are those? It's a, <laughs> a hat. But it's a specific type of hat. It's the, the Is Stetson it a, hat. Oh, the Stetson. Okay. Yeah, yeah, a Stetson. Yeah. I was gonna say I'll have to pull up my list that I I the, have like a visual like infographic yeah. on different. Types we of need hats. that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, please I make no that. Send it yeah, to we us. have it for Burning Frontier. That's the only <laughs> we reason definitely we have need it. that. It's so hard. So you know, one of those hats with the <laughs> with the thing on it. <laughs> Wide brim. He also wears spectacles just for the look. Um, and he has a okay. gold pocket watch, so he's oh. uh, Mr. Fancy Pants most of the time. But uh, he lays down the uh, the law of the land like nobody's business. Cool. Uh, is it the law? Of the it's land? his own law. <laughs> yeah, it is now. The, the law of justice. <laughs> the law of blood. Oh, oh that's good. <laughs> <Great burn. laughs> I'm really proud of you. And you said those are double action revolvers. Yeah, double action revolvers. Cool. So for for our audience and for Alex, because he probably doesn't know. I absolutely know, Caleb. <laughs> <laughs> I absolutely know. I have literally no clue. So a single action revolver, you have to cock the hammer every time for it to land on the firing pin. So with single action guns, you can fan the hammer, which is where you're holding your gun with your right with your right hand and you're taking your left hand and just fanning your left hand over the hammer so it fires in succession. Um, and that's a mechanic in Deadlands where you can just empty your whole, um, what's it called? Cylinder. Cylinder? Yeah. Weird. Okay. Your whole cylinder into, like, just empty your whole c- cylinder into whoever is around. And then double action revolvers, you don't have to cock it every time. You can just pull the trigger and it will fire. But mechanically, uh, they can also do something called uh, double tap, where for one shooting roll, you'll basically use up two ammo and it will give you... Plus two to shooting, plus two to damage. Yep. And I think that's the only nice. thing in Deadlands that you can actually do that with, right? Yeah. So yeah. it's a revolver. The double yeah. action. It's revolving yeah. rifles, too. So that's a setting rule for Deadlands. Oh, very cool. Yeah, so that's what I got. Um, and I was I was curious, do I have to get two holsters then, I would imagine? Only if you want them on you. Yeah, okay. So I, I took two quick draw holsters. Nice. On there. So I'm all about getting my guns out fast and killing as fast as possible. You got like... The edge, too, right? So you're just, like, mm-hmm. double-quick drawing. Yep. Wow. Yep. Harper has that same thing. Nice. Cool. Uh, oh, and, and I got a buckboard because oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I like my friends. Because we spent all that time Googling it, and yeah. we just, you know. Mm-hmm. And I think that's my four mules that are hooked up to that. Yeah, I think that'd be a Why good not? idea. Cool. What about my mule? Well, he's just, he's carrying the whiskey. All right. And for the people that don't want to ride <laughs> horses. he's drunk. Can you ride on top of the buckboard? <laughs> None of us ride the buckboard. We put your mule on it and then okay. pull that the other four. <laughs> Just sleeps most Just of the like way. Yeah, it's sit too drunk in the to... seat somehow. <laughs> I'd pay to see that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 
uh, whose gear is left? Uh, um, probably my. I didn't really pick anything like particularly fancy. I think I'm just gonna kind of keep just clothes and a deck of cards. Pretty much. But, but what kind of hat? Yeah. Oh, <sighs> man. I didn't think about and that. Do you have yeah. chaps? Everybody's got chaps. I hope. <laughs> Everybody has chaps. We already determined that. <laughs> I didn't because I don't ride. I got the you're buckboard. Gonna, your yeah. mistake. Yeah, you got the buckboard. You don't need to ride on the horse. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Riding in style. Maybe I drive, Ryan, and you just sit back there with like your arms leaned back. <laughs> Wait, did anybody take people? the driving skill? Because I think driving is what you would use. To <laughs> drive drive the oh no! I think you're right. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Here we go. I never said he's good at it. Well, <laughs> how hard could it be to drive a bunch of mules? I, I think know? if you're not trying to do anything crazy, it just happens. But if we ever got into a gunfight, that definitely would not fly. Yeah. Or drive. Uh, we are definitely going to get into a gunfight. <laughs> 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 or we're all going to die. If we want to do a campaign, it only lasts like 20 minutes. So. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> We got, time. Yeah, we got time. You're all riding your buckboard. You get attacked. Oh, sorry. You're all dead. <laughs> yep. One of you is going to kill the other with your bloodthirsty or your <laughs> servant of death. Just kidding. That mule's not dead. He's just passed out. <laughs> that was from before. <laughs> That's a callback. <laughs> callback joke. <laughs> all right. What's next, guys? Did everybody do gear? Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, do I think. Anything yeah. fancy? Um, no, like I said, just. Gun mules. Um, after gear, I think the only <laughs> you got four mules. <laughs> <laughs> just I just, well, I just heard gun up. mules as one. Yeah, I mean, the gun does need mules. Need some pants. <laughs> uh, a like mule that said, a gun. So this is you. This mule is just to mount your yeah, Gatling. Gun. Oh, we should have got a Gatling gun. We should have pulled our money together. Yeah, that would have been good <laughs> next time. But uh, the last step in character creation, if unless uh, you need to pick powers, Amelia um, would be. Oh, actually, you probably do. Um, would Oh, but I haven't even thought about that. It's all right. Look them up. While you're looking them up, the last step is your worst nightmare. Oh, that's a thing in Denver? Yes. Oh. Your worst nightmare, and you write it down. And don't worry. It'll never come up in gameplay at all. It it's not like Marshall is going to record it and use it for anything in game. So don't worry about it. <laughs> Just write down whatever your worst fear is. I like how they say it. No reason, really. Trust us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> One thing that's pretty interesting about Deadlands is they keep player and martial information very separate. And it's purposefully like, hey, stay away from these sections. I don't think I've seen that in any other system. Hmm. I'm sure it's out there. I just haven't seen it. So this can be literally anything, right? Yes. Um, I went with drowning. Oh, okay. Oh, that's weird. Because I went with like, um, like whitewater rapids. <laughs> I think that someone in my backstory drowned or something. That's what I was gonna. I was gonna write that right huh. up there. Oh wow, that wasn't a joke. You're gonna do that? Yeah, that's what I was gonna do. Okay, but maybe cool. I should. Yeah, I'm gonna do it anyway. I mean, do it. Yeah, do it. Just avoid water, everybody. Um. Well, yeah. Like my worst nightmare is just water. <laughs> <laughs> that's why you, you only drink alcohol. <laughs> no, that can't be true. <laughs> no, it's not a phobia. It's just your worst nightmare. <laughs> so I guess that's true. <laughs> <laughs> so how many powers do you yes pick? you're right how do you pick those? i should have been looking I'm... those up so you're gonna hate this now that i think about it so mm-hmm. powers are actually technically skills well, that's it depends. wrong it depends on which um arcane background you choose there's a rabbit hole um where did those go i think hucksters just have huckster in you can tell i've made one character in this system ever <laughs> is that just is the the is that just based on like what Skill I picked for spellcasting? Is that how that works? So, yeah, since you're a huckster, because there's like miracles, chi masters, shamanism, weird science, and they each have different ways of casting spells. Mm-hmm. And I'm not. She, she sure. picked Hexen, which is a D8. That's Hexen? What she said. Yeah, Hexen with mm-hmm. an apostrophe at the end. Oh, okay. Um, what we're looking up right now is how many powers she gets gotcha. initially. Because weird scientists get one to start with, because that's the one character. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure it's near the back of the book where it's listing. Um, it's on 91, I think. My book wasn't falling apart. It also references another book, which I don't think we have. Oh, really? Classic Savage World. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I see all of them listed here, but I feel like it doesn't say in the description how Playing many a huckster. Take. Mm-hmm. See, this is exactly what we're talking about when we said make sure to keep the internet <laughs> handy, because you are going to mm-hmm. get lost looking for something. 
Why doesn't it list it here? This is something that frustrates me about rule books. You should repeat, I know this wastes page, pages, but you should repeat every rule in every part of the rule book where it comes up, in my opinion. Or at least, yeah, list the page number. At where least, you can find it. yeah. Oh, okay, maybe it's right. I cannot find this So right here. I think, I think I'm almost there. And if it's here, I'll... What are we trying it. to look for? Powers? Oh. How many I can I take? see. It's, you yeah. have to go to the deluxe guide. What? It says that, yeah, it says um, <laughs> it works just like Magic Edge described in Savage Worlds in the deluxe guide. So we have to go there, except for Huckster's PowerPoints recharge at a much slower rate. I can't even, I can't even find where it says so then you background go to the, edges. It's you, not no, it's there. in the, um, it's in the spell section. So go to the spells and right before that. Why? <laughs> <laughs> so oh go to the spell. God. There we go. And then it'll be talking about trapping. Here we go. Oh, there Magic. it is. So that's on the deluxe thing. Go to page 118. And then the background you want is on page 119. So as a huckster, you get 10 power points, and you start with three powers. So those are powers you can use at any time, and then um, they'll have different point values associated with them, the more powerful they are. And a couple of them are variable as well. And I think it's uh, been errated now that the powers in the Deadlands guide are no longer the powers you're supposed to go off of. <laughs> You're supposed to go off the ones in the deluxe guide. <laughs> Correct. But in our game, we kind of pick and choose because some of them are like super overpowered in the deluxe guide. Like, um, what is it called? Quicken or something like that, for example. But there's just some minor differences. But yeah, there's an errata online you can, you can find. <laughs> so, oh, so it lists a bunch of things for magic hucksters. There's just a bunch of stuff just listed with no explanation of what they are. Yeah, so I think in there it should list the powers available to you, Amelia, and it should list the trappings for them. And then if you look in the deluxe guide, you'll like see the actual power descriptions themselves. What are trappings? Trappings are like, it's a firebolt or it's an the ice flavor. bolt. Oh, it's flavor. okay, yeah, it doesn't yeah. even, it just lists the word. And if it says not available there, that means that as a huckster, you can't get it, essentially. So if you want... If you want to start with a combat power, there's basically two you can get at novice. A bolt, which would be shooting, you know, I don't know. I, I, like a firebolt or it says, like a laser yeah, beam or something. For the huckster, it's hurling playing cards. Yeah, like gambit. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want that. You're a cooler gambit. I just, I just have to say that this book is uh, not laid out too well at all. No, yeah, it's not. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, on I, the top, I was reading yeah. through it, and I'm like, okay, uh, let's get to creating the character. And it's talking about all this stuff, and it's like, okay, well, where, where's your explanation where of what of agility, that? smart, spirit, yeah. strength, and vigor are? Right. It's non-existent. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, okay, that's great. Yeah, you run into a lot of that kind of stuff <laughs> yeah. when you're playing. There's lots of stuff where, like, there was a three- or four-day period where we were trying to figure out if you can dual wield... Uh, automatic pistols which gatling are pistols. gatling pistols oh geez and like they just don't exist it's just like if it can fit in one hand then i don't know maybe you can you can use two of them uh, can, it, it's up you to you use it use, your, use your... the question if you can well, it is te- it too powerful yeah right technically it is just a one-handed thing basically it just says like so submachine guns in the modern part of savage worlds you cannot do a wield no it says it's up to the gm i think at the end of the day it says yeah some gms might let you do it I think that's what it says. <laughs> yeah, it, it literally is just like, I'm, I, I don't know, dude. Do whatever you want. That's the closest thing we could find to it. Wow. I feel like large sections of the Savage Worlds rulebook could actually be improved if it was just blank except for the words. Make some stuff up. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> so your main two offensive powers would be Bolt or Burst, and then the rest are really cool. Um, I think there's one called Hunch I really like, which... Yeah. Thaddeus has, which lets you kind of see the past in a certain area by casting the spell. It's pretty cool. Um, I don't know, man. Invisibility is an option. Um, well, you got to keep in mind, Huckster's can't get all of them, so it has to be Huckster specific. You got to make sure that it has like Huckster in the trapping. Fine, Alex. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I still haven't found a single thing about Huckster spells aside from just a list of names of things. They're in the powers in the main uh, Deadlands guide. You can go over the powers, and then you'll yeah, notice... they're on, like, page... Mm, they start on page... 102? Oh. Hey, there it is. 
Yeah. And at the end of each power, it'll say trappings. And then if there's one that says, one that actually describes something for a huckster, that means the huckster can actually do it. Oh, sweet. You could get beast friend. Well, that makes a lot Ooh, of sense. That's, that's pretty cool. good. That's a very interesting magic system that they've got. Yeah, I do like that there's like different ways of casting spells, depending on which background you take. Mm-hmm. That's kind of cool. You're also really encouraged as a GM to play around with trappings a lot. Like if they're using darkness powers, maybe apply some sort of obscuring thing to anyone shooting inside. Or if you're doing ice, make it harder for people to move through the area where spells are being cast. Oh, very cool. So I think I'm going to take Bolt. Good choice. Cool. I'm going to take Hunch. Cool. And I'm going to take Fear. Oh, that's a good one. Mm -hmm. Now that's like an AOE thing, right? Where everyone around you kind of runs away? Or are they shaken? Yes. Depends on how bad Uh, they feel. They have to make a guts check. Cool. Hey, guts checks comes up again. (laughs) Cool. Well, if you've picked your powers then, uh, I think it's just worst nightmares. So Cameron, you've got... I've got drowning. Great. Um, Alex? I got a white water rapid. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Um, I've been trying to brainstorm something that could be related to his time in the army, but I can't really think of... um, Ryan or Amelia, do you guys have your worst nightmares? Because I, got, I don't. I got mine. What you got? Uh, Go running it. out of bullets in the middle of a firefight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that has definitely happened to him before. Well, does that mean that uh, as the fight goes on longer, you get more and more anxious? <laughs> Probably. I mean, I've got 100 bullets uh, in backup, so I've got plenty. But That should be fine. I'll just steal the rest. That's all right. I think, I think this person's worst nightmare would probably be accidentally killing someone again yikes that makes sense and that is almost guaranteed to happen at some point yeah <laughs> yep. yeah i want to write down uh accidental murder accidentally accidental killing somebody murder. that you didn't mean to kill what's there's an official term That's for called that. manslaughter kill <laughs> 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 right down okay so but you wouldn't know that because you yeah. did not take knowledge <laughs> <laughs> so i pointed the gun at him i pulled the trigger but seriously it was just a bad dice roll <laughs> I'm going to say being stranded somewhere. Mm. Ooh. Isolated and alone. I like it. With nothing but mules and whiskey. <laughs> I mean, if you're going to be stranded, that's a pretty way, pretty good way to there do are, it. Yeah, yeah, there are worse <laughs> ways. Be real dehydrated, though. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's going to be a nightmare. <laughs> well, not if you drink the mule blood. I almost went with uh, oh. peyote instead of it's alcohol. It's tauntaun. He just... <laughs> cool. <laughs> All right, so we probably should name these people, and then I feel like that's... That's it for the main stuff, and then we it? just got our backgrounds to take care of. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. All right. I got one. I've got one. Ryan, what's your name? Dirge Stranglethorn. Oh, oh. Stranglethorn. <laughs> Dang. That's the best name I've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my character's name is Carson Nash. My character's name is Samuel Bronson. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> I named my character Lila Cooper. Nice. Caleb's looking Caleb's up names looking right now. Looking up names right now. <laughs> my name is Jebin Keys. Jebin. Jebin. It's a very West Jebin sounding name. Keys. Nice. Jebin Keys. He sounds like a goody two shoes. He's not he going to fit in here. Bit. He's not going to fit in. He's not going to make it. <laughs> <laughs> but the second he accidentally murders someone, Rand's going to be like, oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty cool. Pretty good. <laughs> Ryan's character like walks up and like pats him on the back and jump and Right. <laughs> I, w- I was busy looking up a name just so I can write them down. Amelia and Ryan, could you say your character names again? I got um, I, Lila Cooper. Yep. And I've got Dirge Stranglethorn. Dirge. How could you forget Dirge Stranglethorn? <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was caught up in the Stranglethorn. <laughs> That's, yeah. What are you, Cameron? Uh, Carson Nash. Carson. Nick Knack is mine. <laughs> Samuel. Do people call you Sam or Samuel? They don't really talk to me much. Sam or Sammy? <laughs> well, it depends, depends on who they are, I guess. You can call me Sam. Sam? I like, yeah, I like you. you can call Sam, me Sam Brownie. Cool. Bronson. Wow, these are some cool characters, you guys. Let's do it. All right. Yeah, let's play. Let's start let's recording. Start. Yeah. <laughs> Who's going right, to be the session one? the game marshal, though. Ugh. Uh, let's one pick of one dogs. of the dogs. Yeah. Wicca. Wicca, you got to do it. Wicca, come get your shot, dude. It's time to GM. <laughs> what was your last name, Caleb? It was Keys. K e y e s. I'm gonna assume that's how it's pronounced because it's my character. You can pronounce it. You can pronounce yeah, it. Yeah. That's be cool. You're in charge. Jeez, really cool. 
Control your um, destiny. I just like when people have murder names. <laughs> <laughs> just... So I think I've heard most of the backgrounds for these characters, but I think we still have to flesh those out, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think I have much of a background for my character yet. <laughs> cool. Aside from what made him the way he is, people. you know? Well, why don't we reestablish with you, Alex? Okay. Do you want to just re your lumberjack? I was a lumberjack. Okay. I think that uh, I stopped being a lumberjack a few years back, though. I think that uh, I was probably, as a child, I probably lost a parent, as lots of kids do in these uh, trying times in the Weird West. Um, I, I pictured that they drowned in a river when we were trying to cross it or something, moving out west. And I was raised by a single parent, I don't know, uh, just say my mom. And uh, never really fit into society. I'm a larger man, not very smart. I uh, don't really like interacting with people very much. So as an adult, um, started working for a lumber company, and I liked the the solitude of the the wilds, the the forest. And eventually, I just decided to kind of just go off the grid and build myself a little cabin. I've been living out there with my mule, drinking whiskey. I probably only going to town every every once in a while to sell some stuff and uh, exchange the the money I got for that for whiskey. And uh, I've seen a lot of stuff out there in those. I imagine uh, stuff. Maybe on one of those trips you ran into my character at a at a at a bar or something. Yeah, probably. Uh I think Carson Nash uh kind of grew up uh further east in a bigger city. Uh I imagine him being uh a city slicker. He wears lots of nice clothes. Um I think he probably spent some time on the street, not necessarily due to being orphaned or anything like that, but I think he spent a lot of time like hustling people and 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 tricking people, making making some money, not necessarily through the the proper channels. Um, I think he's from Louisiana. I imagine him being a, a real smooth talker, somebody who uh, he likes to play cards, but he's not particularly good at playing cards. I think he's much better at playing people. So he likes to he likes to get into people's heads and mess around and and see what he can get out of the out of people around him. I think uh, at some point he probably ran into a. Uh, Samson, Samuel, and then, uh, I don't know, maybe they hit it off a little bit. Maybe he's the only person that uh, didn't treat Samuel like he was an outcast. Maybe there's a weird little friendship going on there. So just to be clear, you guys met in a tavern. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is an RPG, Caleb. But in the West. A West tavern. A Western tavern. A saloon. But wait, who's that mysterious stranger in the corner that we don't know anything about his backstory? <laughs> oh my God, is that a wizard? <laughs> All right, who's next? I think it's Ryan. He's sitting in the corner. I probably Ryan. would be sitting in the corner, probably gambling. Um, I, I'm trying to figure out like his uh, his backstory and motivations. I, I wanted to him to be kind of like a, a typical outlaw, uh, intimidating people uh, for their money, and that's why he's you know kind of showing off his wealth a bit um, and killing people that don't play game with him and taking their money. Anyway, um, so he's a robber baron. Yeah, so he was probably he probably grew up east and came west uh, to get away from the law and and just to you know he keeps going west further and further and eventually he's going to run out of west to go to. Um, but he he's got a little bit of a, a reputation uh, going on. Cool. Um, I think Jebin always wanted to be a pastor. Uh, he grew up. Uh, preacher's son and really bought into that whole philosophy. Um, unfortunately, I think there wasn't a lot of congregations around where he could do that, and he was a little scared to leave his hometown and leave his home state. So he was just kind of stuck for a while. Um, and then the war started up, because I think he's an older gentleman, and he had the option to be a chaplain in the army. And in the Southern Army. So he uh, took up, went to war, and accidentally killed a dude. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he's just kind of been um, going uh, around the West wherever he, think, wherever he thinks God leads him, trying to um, go away, f get away from his deserting past. And how did he end up with a crew like this? Uh, that's a great <laughs> question. I don't know. <laughs> I would like to be the town witch Ooh. and the town crazy, Ooh. which I can use that word because I have several disorders. <laughs> it's fine, everyone. I can use the word crazy. It is fine. Crazy. It's fine. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna hold you up to it. 
Um, yeah, no, I mean, I think I, I picked all the hindrances for, like, bad dreams and delusional, and so I think she's got some crazy premonition kind of stuff going on, but is not, um, not entirely there. Cool. Okay. So, I'm I'm thinking my character probably, um, is seeing that he's kind of running out of trail to run, and he wants to probably hire himself out as you know protection or whatever you would need a uh, a good gunslinger for cool. so that might be uh that might be why he fell in with you folks i don't, i can imagine that at some point he and carson ended up gambling at the same table oh there you go and maybe carson used his intuition and kind of worked some information out of you that you didn't necessarily think you were giving up mm-hmm. and then uh maybe he hired you on for protection he's not the greatest gun himself and he gets himself into a lot of trouble. Mm-hmm. So maybe he need a little help. And then uh, his buddy Samuel came along. That's right. Who knows what kind of stuff they were getting into. <laughs> also, Samuel was there. <laughs> would, it be, um, would it be ridiculous to say that um, Jevin's actually having some bounty hunters on him right now? And he's Ooh. kind of trying to hire people to get him out of this situation. And while he doesn't have any money, he is willing to pay you each in a single mule. <laughs> oh, I like that. <laughs> yes. Ooh, I would help you out for a mule. I think so, for right? For sure. Because all he need is like to go one town over. And then whatever the plot of the game dictated would sort of wrap us up in it, I imagine. Oh, right? that'd be very interesting, yeah. So maybe uh, Samuel Dirge and Carson are kind of running as a... Just like basically bodyguards, Carson acts as the face, and then both Samuel and Dirge are kind of the, the muscle, and he's kind of running this little business to protect people. He's kind of swindling people on his own time. That's how they're making their money. Yeah. And then Lila, I don't know if you could also have a reason for leaving town. Like maybe people recently have gotten real, uh, what's the word? People always want to string you up, I imagine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yeah, they've got their torches. Yeah, maybe it just got a little, little too much heat on you, and uh, you saw this mm-hmm. as a good opportunity to get out of there. It would be. I think maybe too. Jebin didn't quite realize how close people were to catching you, and yeah, maybe Lila had some sort of oh, like told me crazy dream about yeah, it. Yeah, premium oh, premonition. Wow. She came and saved you. That that would be pretty cool. And then in his eyes, that would sort of be like. You were sent by God to save him, and now he has to save you from your wicked ways. Oh, yeah. Okay, cool. Nice. That would be good. Really good. I like it. Cool. So you're all helping me escape town. Yeah. Sweet. Who knows what we get into after that? Who knows? (laughs) Shenanigans. I'm just in it to feed my revolvers. (laughs) You're the worst, (laughs) right? They're hungry and thirsty. You've never lived until you made a man die. I really like that voice, though. Please keep doing that. <laughs> yeah, that's a good voice. <laughs> oh, man. Cool. Well, that's how, that's our backgrounds. That's how we know each other. Yeah, we did it. Cool. Where do we go? F- this is it, right? We did it. We did it? We did it. <laughs> wow, guys. Wow. Well, we, yeah. we did, we did two thirds of it. two thirds of it. So, yeah, we, we did two thirds of it. All right. Well, uh, thank you, good guys, just uh, for joining us for our Deadlands Reloaded character creation episodes. Uh, Cameron, could you go ahead and remind the listeners who you are and let them know where to find you? Yeah, I'm Cameron Reed. Um, I play Harper on Sounds Like Crows. Um, if you want to get in contact with me, you can always tweet at me uh, at cjreed211. Um, other than that, I'm on Instagram um, at dungeons underscore n underscore uh, dumbbells. And yeah, that's where you can find me. And where can people find you, Alex? Uh, you can also find me on Twitter. Um, you can find me at um, at Orson underscore Sharp. That's O R S O N underscore S H A R P E. Um, I get on there sometimes. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, you can find me on there. Awesome. And what about you, Caleb? Quickest way to contact me is definitely tweet at me at Marshall Caleb. You also can send me an email at sounds like crows at gmail.com. Or you can go to our website, uh, soundslikecrows.com. Again, all spelled like Russell Crow, And I should respond to any of those. Well, thank you guys for joining us. And hopefully you will all be back for our next episode where we discuss these characters we just Yeah, made. thanks for having us. Woo-hoo. Yeah, as long as I don't accidentally murder Alex before that. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see how that goes.
Character Creation Cast is a production of the One Shot Podcast Network and can be found online at www.charactercreationcast.com. Head to the website to get more information on our hosts and guests, or even some of our character sheets. Character Creation Cast can be found on Twitter at CreationCast. I'm one of your hosts, Ryan Bolter, and I can be found on Twitter at Lord Neptune. Our other host, Amelia Antrim, can be found on Twitter at Ginger Reckoning. Music for this episode is used with a Creative Commons license or with permission from the podcast they originated from. Further information can be found within the show notes. Our main theme music is Hero Remix by Steve Combs and is used with a Creative Commons license. This podcast is owned by us under Creative Commons. This episode was edited by Ryan Bolter. Further information for the game systems used in today's guests can also be found in the show notes. If you like the systems discussed and wish to purchase them, links to the product can be found in the show notes. Also, check the notes or the website for cool stuff to go with each character, such as dice or mixtapes. Thanks for joining us, and remember, we find that the best part of any role-playing game is character creation. So go out there and create some amazing people. We will see you next time. Some show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Character Creation Cast is hosted by the One Shot Podcast Network. If you enjoyed our show, visit oneshotpodcast.com where you'll find other great shows like The Broadswords. The Broadswords is an all woman DD podcast focused on drama, role play, and subverting stereotypes. Join the broads as they unravel the mystery of Snowy Rashomon, a land ruled by witches and steeped in superstition. Berserkers reign and spirits roam the frozen wastes. Yularis, Kila, Mipri all have their own reasons for journeying north, but they soon find they have something in common. They are pawns in a divine plot.